With Temporal Forces literally right around the corner, I wanted to do something a little bit different. And so today, I'm going to be ranking the top 10 cards rotating that I won't miss. Now, you're going to have to forgive me because I think I've misled you a little bit on this one because it's not exactly 10 cards that I won't miss. What I'm going to do is go from number 10 being the card that I will miss the most all the way down to number one, which would be the card that I cannot wait to see just get out of the format. So it's a spectrum of sorts. So in at number 10, the card that I really am sad to see go is Zorak. It has to be the most unfortunate letdown ever since it came out. I mean, when this deck started to come through it was looking exciting right you had the slow bro and even more recently you have things like sizzle running around with it reversal energy is even helping it out i've never seen a car with so much support and a genuine archetype existing but it never doing well at any sort of event and even with cards coming out in the new sets as you should expect because the idea of zorak is of course to devolve into stage ones there are some good stage ones coming out that could also be used in zorak think of the right for example or even in some odd cases like the electivite that's coming out but of course you can say with every set release there's a card that would have worked in the Zorak archetype because well that's the point right but it's just a shame to see it go and it never actually meet its potential because it's a really really unique archetype but for now it's gone and at number nine we have Raihard this isn't a card that didn't meet any expectations or potential in fact it did it, it served as that one of card in decks that may struggle with energy acceleration and has seen play at pretty much all levels but again it's a card that I relied on a lot when it came to building road decks from time to time and we all know like looking at cards like teammates uh, effects that are very strong that come from a knockout are always very good and losing Raihan yeah it does suck because it's a very very strong card that saw a lot of play and I would use so many times to see that leave the format kind of leaves a little bit of a hole yes we do have Mila but that's specifically for fire types I'm talking about an overall card you can throw in any deck and it can get you out of a sticky situation and so I'm gonna miss Raihan not as much as Zorak though in at number eight we have Rayquaza V Max this sits in the same place as Zorak because it never met its potential until now, where it started popping up in regionals, it started popping up in online tournaments as this uh, one hit KO attacker in the Arceus Armor Rouge deck. And it's as I said when I covered it, it's it's great to see it finally actually have some genuine meta share for albeit a short period of time, but to see Rayquaza at the top was something people expected when it first came out. And with it rotating out, with Arceus actually looking to be an even stronger archetype going into the next set, it feels like it's just been cut by the heels as it began to stand. And now we have number seven, that being Umbreon VMAX. Now, we, as we start going down, I'm starting to become a bit more impartial here because Umbreon VMAX serves a similar role to Rayquaza in a sense where it's a very strong effect. It's a card I have a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of love for in that I really enjoyed using it with Arceus to gust things up, go, combine it with Lost City, take things out, you know. I remember it combining with Duraladon back in the day and just having a very, very aggressive Arceus build. But this is more of a personal one where I just am sad to see Dark Signal or Blood First the eyes that effect leave the format, but I'm not too bothered by it. And at number six, we have the mysterious tail Mew. Now, again, another one I'm a little bit impartial with. Again, not too bothered about it going, but it is a very strong effect that sees play all the time. One example would be in Charizard X, where just being able to find item cards can be an absolute big deal for sure. I mean, I remember even being used back in the day in things like Turbo Darkrai or, or Turbo Gengar V Max, if you remember. It's a very strong card that is leaving, but uh, uh, to say, I would miss it, I think is a bit too harsh, but it is a little bit sad to see that effect go. And that's kind of where I stand with that. And here we have number five, the one that I think I'm just not bothered about either way. <laughs> and that is Melanie. So on the one hand, Melanie is a very strong supporter card that has seen play in many ways, mainly in things like Palkia, Suicune back in the day, and still sees play in that kind of Palkia Ice Rider archetype. But it's not really a strong supporter nowadays. And also it's quite nice to see a little bit of the water acceleration go, especially in a format with things like Bax Calibur. I think Melanie is kind of just there and it's awkward now. Plus, it can only attach itself to Vs, and a lot of the Vs are rotating out too, and V Maxes as well, which we'll get to in a bit. So it just gets less and less powerful anyway. So although it's a nice supporter card that I enjoy playing, I think it's 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 time. It should be rotating out really. And in at number four, as we start going to the cards that I am slightly glad to see leave, it's Path to the Peak. Now I know, I know, we need a card like Path in the format, right? We need a card that can help maintain the balance, prevent decks with abilities going absolutely wild. I mean, you are already seeing the effect 
effect with Charizard EX becoming what is looking to be the undoubtable best deck in formats. Like now it's questionable, right? But Charizard EX is looking to be that guy. And I think Path Leaving has a massive impact on that because there were decks that were able to utilize Path to slow Charizard down from time to time. And so with that, I, I'm not putting at the top at number one or anything like that because I understand that effect going. However, me being a rogue deck creator, someone who relies on abilities all the time to build my combos, it's nice to see Path go. It's nice to have a format that this may be a hot take, but it's nice to have a format where I can just go rampant with abilities, where I can just go crazy and not have to worry about any sort of ability lock through Path to the Peak. And that, for me, is a little bit of a breath of fresh air, at least as a player who makes rogue decks. I understand, though, the hit on the competitive side. And so that's why it is at number four. And at number three, these are cards now that I'm just kind of glad are going. It is Battle VIP Pass. Now, I know there's a lot of Battle VIP Pass haters out there who would probably put it at number one. And I, I, I hear I hear loud and clear, all right? I know, I, know, I get it, man. It, VIP is just it's too much, it's too fast. It's, it, it just allows decks that shouldn't exist to exist. Roaring Moon, you can just go crazy with VIP Pass. It just needs some balancing. I hear you, mate, but there's no better feeling than a turn one VIP. I think we can all agree on that. And so that's why it's in the third place and not in the number one. But I tell you what, I'm just glad to see it going for the reasons I mentioned earlier. And it really leans the format into a turn one, turn two type format where if you don't get that VIP pass, odds are you can just lose the game. And I, I think a card with that much effect, it's nice to see it go. And I also hate clunked up hands where you have VIP pass that you can't use because you didn't get it on turn one. That ain't, that ain't a good feeling. That's a bad feeling. And in at number two is one you probably didn't expect. It's Kyoga. Now, I didn't play Kyoga much myself. In fact, I was always on the receiving end on it. So this one's a lot more personal. It's going to be nice to play against a Lost Box deck and not have to worry that at the end of the game, they just explode you. And that late game devastating power, although quite good, is just not something I enjoy coming up against. And look, I understand you can just, just, just play a Manaphy. Problem solved. But I, I just want it gone. All right, I don't want any more of that Kyoga 250, 250 on the bed. None of that. We, we're going to see the Kyogonal deck leave, even though that still is a deck that no one's playing anyway. I just don't like Kyoga. I don't like it. I don't want it. I don't want to see it anymore on my opponent's side of the field. I don't have to worry about that threat. It, it just, it, again, it's a breath of fresh air. And uh, if I was to compare that to VIP Pass, I do prefer VIP Pass a little bit more because I used it. So that's why Kyoga's at number two. But at number one, it is the one I'm looking forward to see leave the most. And it's it's a card, but it's also an archetype. It's Mew VMAX. This deck has been absolutely played to death. It is the unsung, in my opinion, the best card ever created, all right? Because of the support that it has. In fact, it's probably the best deck ever to I'm sorry, you can't have an archetype with that many counters printed, all right? Drapion, Spiritomb, and all that. Path to the Peak was supposed to counter it, but Mew's so strong, it was able to include it. It is way, way too strong, and to see it leave is so so nice. When I play against the Mew nowadays, I think, oh, Mew. There's no excitement. There's nothing anymore. Mew is a just a dull deck that when I see or even play, I have little to no care or interest in. And it just is a pain in the back when coming up against it. Because I often forget to put Spirit Tombs in my deck. And even then, it can deal with Spirit Tomb because you have the Ice Cube. So it's just way, way too much. It should not have existed in the first place. And it's so good to see a deck that has dominated the top tier for so long. Even at, at times being being an underdog, you know, when people thought Mew was kind of just falling off, but then it just pops back up again and wins a regional. It's nice to see that that parasite just leave the format. And there you have it. There is my list from the ones I'm not looking forward to leaving and the ones that I am most looking forward to leaving. And I know it's going to be a little bit on the controversial side, so let me know in the comments down below what you think, what cards are you looking forward to leaving. I'm sure a lot of you will actually be quite sad to see Kyogre leave, or might be quite sad to see Mew VMAX leave. And that's that's the point of it, right? This is just my list. So yeah, obviously take that with you know a pinch of salt, of course. But we will leave it there. Do leave a like, subscribe, and peace.